Good evening viewers. Uh, the purpose of this video to explain what PAYE is, is very important, uh, mostly theoretical, but it's good to understand how this PAYE works in the UK. So useful for ACCA, ACA and CTA taxation exam. Also helpful for individual to understand how the PAYE system operates in the UK. So, this is an introduction. PAYE schemes are operated by the employers and collected taxes for, from their employee for the HMRC. So the employer acting as an agent. So when you are individual working for a company, so you will get pay. So it's the employer would, from your gross pay, would deduct tax and national insurance. So they would pay tax and national insurance to uh, HMRC and will pay you net. That is very basic. Most of the worker in the UK under PAYE scheme, they understand this. A PAYE scheme must be set up where an employer pays at least one employee at or about the lower earning limit for class one national insurance, which is 123 pound per week for 2023 and 24. If you have employee uh, even number of employees if you're paying less than this amount you don't have to set up any paye mostly for example if it's a family business and then they have young children and set up and they work especially farmer so the young children like 15 16 years old so they helping their parents and the, if the parents pay them because of the working carrying some water or helping them with the farm work so instead of giving them um, pocket money i suggest they should give them um, like a wage type or some kind of remuneration so if the remuneration is less than 123 pound per week uh, that is the limit for 2023-24 so then don't need to set up any PAYE schemes and this will be also deductible for income tax purposes as well. Uh, through PAYE HMRC recover tax and national insurance. Okay, so it's very simple. The employer is responsible for calculating the precise amount of tax by using um, any commercial payroll, payroll software. It's very basic. Uh, PAYE income is it consists of employment income, pension income, payment by employer to former employees, and PAYE social security income such as uh, sick pay and statutory maternity pay. PAYE income. We are mainly concerned with the PAYE employment income, which is made of taxable earning and other taxable income by the reason, by reason of employment. So for example, salaries, bonuses, allowances, and taxable termination pay. There are some cash payment made by employer to employee that will not be subject to PAYE. For instance, the payment of mileage in excess of HMRC prescribed amount is not subject to PAYE. The X is simply reported on P11D. For instance, you drew your own car and the, the prescribed rate is for the first 10,000, you get 45p. For any mileage above 10,000, you get 25 pence. However, if the employer reimburses you more than the prescribed rate, so this should not go on PAYE. Um, it will go on P11D as a taxable benefit. Other points to remember. Remember that the reimbursement of fully allowable business expenses, if you incur, if you're an employee and you incur an expense while you on a business trip and the employer reimburses you the full amount, okay, not, not more or less, okay, it's not subject to PAYE. However, where the amount reimbursed is more than the actual cost, the full amount will be subject to PAYE. So any excess would be subject to PAYE. Um, any private expenses reimbursed to the employee will be subject to PAYE. For instance, you went to clubs or pubs, you know, or you went for a dinner, you know, and it's not related to business, and 
and the employer pay for this one so that is subject to paye however the, if the amount is paid directly to supplier then the paye is not due for instance if the if that is not paid to you by to supplier so it's not subject to paye paye also apply to non cash payment to an employee the payment in kind can be surrendered for cash so for instance they give you some gift or for example um rolex watch or something where you can just sell it immediately um that is also subject to paye other points to remember payment to employee in the form of readily convertible asset for example if you get a shares and that shares is listed on the stock exchange for example shares in a public limited company shares in tesco obviously that would be going on paye uh, it can also include asset which for which there is a trading arrangement in place for example your employer give you a brand new mercedes and then subsequently there's a understanding or arrangement that um, then is a part of the deal that the employer has arranged a third party to buy this car from that employee and receive cash so that will be subject to paye as well PAYE treatment for benefits. So benefits such as the use of company car, provision of fuel, okay, living accommodation are not PAYE income in the first place. Therefore, the taxable benefit amount does not have to be subject to PAYE. However, an employer can register with HMRC to report and tax the benefit via payroll. There's an option available. So the tax due on the benefit will be therefore collected from the employee salary payment. So it's possible to payroll or put a certain benefit on payroll. To payroll the benefit, it is a voluntary system. It's not compulsory. The benefit usually go on p d However, you can put them on payroll and the employer can choose which benefit they can include. All benefit can be payrolled apart from living accommodation and beneficial loan in practice the if in the like in real scenario the employer need to register online before the start of the tax year if they want to payroll the benefit if the employee stop receiving the benefit then the benefit will be ceased to be included in payroll where the value of the benefit changes during the tax year for example from bmw car to mercedes car uh, so a relevant adjustment need to be made if a benefit hasn't been payroll the cash equivalent of the benefit must be reported on p 11 d taxes paid on these benefit at the end of the year under self-assessment because if you miss the pay if it goes on payroll it will be automatically get taxed however if you don't include on payroll you will report on p11d so if you have seen my previous video the way it's work is we file the p11d on the p11d we put the name of the employee the date of birth national insurance so, so once we file it hmrc get the notification so obviously hmrc receive that form and then they can trace that employee and ask them to pay additional tax by the due date calculation of the tax to be deducted so the tax on the income is calculated using the employee tax code it's very important the tax code tell the employer what allowances are due to the employee for example the people with um, people with the adjusted net income not exceeding 100000 will be entitled to full person allowance so obviously what's happened is if your income is less than 100000 you are entitled for full person allowance which is 1200 12,570. Then the person announced reduce if your income in excess of 100,000. So for each one pound in excess of 100,000, your person announced knocked down by 50 pence. This means if you reach to 126,000 or something or 125,000, no person announced. Tax and NIE withheld from the gross pay and the net amount is paid to the employee. So the tax and NIE is paid to the HMRC and the net pay is paid to the employee. It's very simple. Further points to remember, to prevent financial hardship, hardship, the maximum amount of tax can be deducted from any payment cannot exceed 
50% of the payment. For instance, someone's salary is 3,000. You know, so the maximum tax liability in any event should not be more than 1,500. However, this does not imply when the tax is being deducted in respect of readily available asset, where the pay can be reduced to nil. For instance, if the tax due in relation to a readily available asset, so if there's 3,000 due, and, um, then, and that is total payment, so all the tax can be taken, so nothing can be left for employees. It's mean like where the pay can be reduced to nil. So it could be situation, like um, I need a separate video on this one. Um, when you study employment taxes, you will come across with this kind of scenario. However, I'm not going to discuss this here. Tax code. The HMRC issued tax code to the, to the employer. A detailed breakdown how HMRC have arrived at the tax code is given to employee on form P2. The employer also received notification. However, the HMRC does not provide the breakdown because this information is confidential because sometimes the employee working with that employer they have some other income um so obviously the hmrc would change the tax code accordingly so the, the hmrc would send only a notification through their online portal to or they can send a letter to the employer say they use this tax code from the following month that's it they won't explain why they would explain to employee but not to the employer because it's confidential how the tax code is calculated so we have the allowance for the year and knocked down by the benefit minus the benefit so we have the net allowance due mr james is entitled to a personal allowance of 12,570. he also had a company car with a benefit of 5,000. He's also provided with the private fuel for the car, giving rise to a benefit of 5,000. The employer does not include the benefit in payrolls. So it means no tax has been deducted. So the James tax code will be, so his person allowance is 12,570. Deduct the benefit. So the net allowance left is 2,570. So the James, the way we need to do is, what we need to do, the procedure is knock down the last figure, which is zero, the last digit, replace this by L. So in this case, it was 2570, so remove that zero, instead of zero put L, so he, the James tax code will be 257L. Usual tax code, the basic tax code is 12, uh, 1257L. 1257L mean is 12,570 full allowance. However, where the allowance need to be reduced, so that's the way it works. This means the gents will be only eligible for a small allowance. Sarah, there's a difference here. Sarah has a, a salary of 70,000, higher um, paying tax at the higher rate. She received a car benefit for the taxable value of uh, 5,000 through PAYE. So remember the tax has been deducted from the car benefit. She also received a dividend of 5,000 and the interest income of 1,000. So remember Sarah being additional paying tax at additional rate. So she will obviously she will have a dividend allowance of 2,000. Um, she will have an interest allowance, personal saving allowance of 500 because she's paying tax at the higher rate. So the way you need to calculate is always start with the person allowance minus the interest income because of the interest allowance so 500 is subject to tax and the dividend tax is so 2,531 now this will be calculated on the following slide I will show you how to calculate this dividend it's a bit complicated but not super complicated so net allowance left with 9,539 so knock of the last digit nine and replace it with the l so the sarah tax code will be 953 l simple it's been that the benefit the 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 person allowance will be restricted because of the there are some income which hasn't been taxed so sarah will have a dividend allowance of 2000 and the person saving allowance of 500 as we did the calculation so the dividend income of 3000 will be charged at the margin rate of 40%. So be careful. However, HMRC will collect only um, because the dividend rate is 33.75. So 
So first we need to do, we multiply dividend by the rate because Sarah is paying tax at the higher rate and the dividend is taxed as a stop slice. So 3,000 multiplied by 4.3375. And then we multiply this by 1,000. We got the result multiplied by 100 divided by 40. So this give you uh, 2,531. So if you look at the previous slides, you will see that was the dividend amount. So if you check this one, you give you the 1,012. So if you multiply 2,531 multiplied by 40%, you get 1,012.5. So what's happened is, what this tax code tells you? Let's come to the point. Remember, PAYE is not an exact science. There's always will be underpayment of tax and overpayment of tax. Hence, many taxpayers in the UK will either have small under or over payment uh, at the end of the year. If the tax due for a year is less than 3,000, HMRC do not require this tax to be paid under self-assessment on 31st of January. Instead, they are happy to collect the tax in a later tax year under PAYE. For England. So what will happen is they will change your tax code. So when they change your tax code, it means they will give you a lower percent allowance. So automatically, HMRC would collect their unpaid tax. So instead of giving you 12,570, they might give you an allowance or they won't give you no percent allowance, you know, just to recover their money. So they know how to adjust this one. This example, Mrs. Smith is a basic rate taxpayer employed on a salary of 25,000 per annum and has a medical insurance benefit of 600, which is not included in the payroll. So it's mean that 600 pound is not taxed yet. In 2022-23, Mr. Smith has a tax underpayment of 250 pound. So one tax underpayment will be because of the medical insurance and the other is just because the whole amount is of 250 pound is not paid so remember we start with the, how we work out the tax code so the tax code tell the employer how much person allowance should be given in the following year so the person allowance or during the year it must seek and change it person allowance of 12,570 remember there's a benefit which were not included on the payroll so no tax so minus that benefit and there's an underpaid tax so if the, there is an underpaid of tax, so you multiply straight by, because he's a basic rate taxpayer, 100 divided by 20, so that gives you 1,250. So his net allowance is um, 10,720. Remember, remove that zero. So his tax code will be 1,072. It means um, it will, he will get the lower person allowance. So by this way, HMRC would reclaim the tax of this 250 pound and then on, on the benefit of 600 pounds so that would be 20 percent more tax so that's how they would record your money by giving you um, a tax code which would lower your percent allowance there's another one is k code a k code is a negative code a k code will arise for example where the benefit not included in the payroll exceed the allowance for the year. Usually, if individual earning more than 100,000, you will have this K code because when you earn more than 100,000, you don't get the person allowance. I mean, or if you reach 125,000, your person allowance almost diminish. So, when that is where this is the case, um, so a normal code has an account, so tax free each month, where K1. Okay, will actually increase the taxable pay. So what will happen is this would create a problem for you. So here's an example. Teddy, an employee, is entitled to full person allowance, has a total benefit of 15,000, not included in the payroll. So Teddy tax code will be a person allowance of 12,570, and he got the benefit of 15,000. So what's happened is his allowance will be negative. It means he will not get any person allowance. So here what we do is here we take 2,430. Uh, 2, we remove the final zero to give 243. And then HMRC deduct 
uh, one to give 242. So from 243, you detect one, it's become 242. Then HMRC put uh, K at the front. So the tax code become two, uh, becomes K242. Sorry, that should be 242, not 295, okay? Once the employee has adjusted net income in excess of 125,140, automatically he will not be entitled to a personal allowance. If he has no other relief available, his code will be as follows. So the personal allowance is then, if you remember, if individual has a net income in excess of 100,000, so for each pound, the person allowance will be reduced by 50 pence. So if he reached to 125,000 pound, he, his person allowance will diminish. And then if you get the benefit, so then you need to calculate the tax code because of the benefit, he will have a negative allowance of 15,000. So from 15,000, knock down the last zero. So it's giving you 1,500. And then from 1500 minus one, it's give you 1499. The HMRC will place letter K at front. Other point to remember, this will be notified to the HMRC, to the employer by HMRC. As a result, the employee payee income will be increased by a certain amount each month because the HMRC need to collect this money. So, if, so to effectually tax the benefit at source. This prevent a large tax underpayment. Because what's happened is if they don't adjust your tax code, each time you'll get your person allowance, and eventually each year, there will be underpayment of tax. After six, seven years, HMRC would tell you that you need to pay 20,000. So obviously you will not be happy. So therefore, to stop this from occurring, so each time they see there is underpayment or overpayment of the tax, the HMRC would change your tax code. Remember that the maximum amount of tax can be deducted from any payment cannot exceed 50% of that payment. Well, thanks for watching. If you do have any queries or question, drop me a line or two. Uh, I'm happy to answer your queries. Um, if you like this video, kindly subscribe to my channel. I'll be making more videos, more useful videos. These are complicated things. These are very complicated. However, it's good to know because PAYE system is very common in the UK. So almost like 30 person, I mean like there are millions of people on PAYE currently. So just it's good to know how does it work. Uh, I wishing you a very good night. Bye now.